What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're checking out a new one-of-a-kind grenade launcher that just became available. A strained grenade launcher called the Tusk of the Boar. I was really excited about this weapon getting added, and I've spent several painstaking hours farming for the best possible perk combinations. And that's what's so amazing about this grenade launcher. It has so many different great combinations that could be viable options in so many different loadouts, both in PvE and in the Crucible, and not just when using a strained subclass. And today we're going to be checking out all that this grenade launcher has to offer, so that you'll know whether this orange is worth the squeeze. The first real downside to the Tusk of the Boar is that it's only available in the Iron Banner, and I know that that will deter some of you. But there is an upside. This week, Iron Banner features two different playlist options, with Control or Tribute, and you'll have two different methods to obtain the Tusk of the Boar. Getting it randomly at the end of an Iron Banner match, or by focusing it at the tower with Lord Saladin. This is a Waveframe Grenade Launcher, the first kinetic strained Waveframe added into Destiny. Many of its base stats match that of the Forbearance, or Harsh Language. It even has a few of the same 3rd and 4th column perks. Tusk of the Boar comes with the Skulking Wolf and Field Tested Origin Traits. Build Tested will be a much better option in most situations, as it provides a stacking bonus to the range, stability, handling, and reload speed of this weapon after getting Final Blows. This starts pretty low across the board, at only 3-5 to five points with each stat, but by the time it gets up to 4 stacks, you're looking at a plus 20 range, plus 30 stability, plus 30 handling, and plus 50 points to reload speed. It might not give you the health recovery like the Forbearance's Soul Drinker Origin trait does, but Field Tested still has its benefits. Tusk of the Boar offers 7 different barrel options. With increased velocity, our grenades are going to get to their target faster, so whatever we do with our barrels, we don't want to lose any velocity. With Quick Launch, we're able to increase our velocity pretty substantially, while also increasing our handling. I also like Linear Compensator or Smart Drift Control for the same reason. There's only two second column options with the Tusk of the Boar. You're either going with Implosion Rounds or High Velocity Rounds. And whether it's for Crucible or PvE, we want to go with High Velocity. The third column opens us up to a lot of perks that offer different methods of auto reloading. We have Grave Robber, which I think is an absolutely perfect choice if you're running a build that focuses around the use of your melee, like the Berserker Titan with the Syntheseps. There's also Slideways, which would work out really nicely if you were a player who likes sliding around a lot, which you would probably find yourself doing when going with an Arc build that's giving you an amplified speed boost. Envious Assassin is one of the more user-friendly methods that this weapon offers to be able to auto-reload your weapon. Getting final blows with other weapons refills and overflows the magazine, and if you double dip on it, you can have as many as three in the chamber. You can wreak a lot of havoc with three grenades, especially with some of the fourth column perks that this grenade launcher offers, which is why I think Envious Assassin can be a much better option over top of Grave Rubber slideways, or even pulse monitor. Now we also have slice in the third column, which is going to reduce your enemy's damage output by 40%. This is triggered when activating your class ability with the Tusk of the Boar equipped. This is a very powerful perk to have right now to help with your survivability, both in the Crucible and in PvE. But to use it right, you need to use it with builds that focus around the use of your class ability like the Swarmer's Strained build for Warlocks. But it's not just limited to the Strained subclass. This is a weapon perk that will benefit you on any subclass. We also have Enlightened Action in the third column, much more of a Crucible perk, providing a stacking bonus to this weapon's handling and reload speed whenever hitting targets. And since this is a Waveframe Grenade Launcher, you have the potential to hit a lot of enemies at once. This increase starts at a 2 point bonus and maxes out at a 50 point increase in reload speed. 
so definitely something that could be beneficial, but more in Crucible. In the fourth column, we have six different perk options, and each are going to facilitate a completely different playstyle. We have Hatchlings, which has become a really popular weapon trait, giving this weapon the ability to create Threadlings on final blows. This peers up really nicely with a seasonal artifact mod called Horde Shuttle, allowing you to create a ton of those little green bastards. Deconstruct is also an option on the Tusk of the Boar, and I see this having more of a benefit in the Crucible than anywhere else. Deconstruct grants bonus damage against constructs like barriers, stasis crystals, and vehicles and it even automatically reloads this weapon when continuously hitting those constructs. This could prove to be very beneficial in the Crucible when you're trying to knock down Titan Barricades or large Stasis Crystals. I don't think Deconstruct will be as useful in the PvE as it is with Crucible, but it still offers some unique interactions since Deconstruct will proc off of Barrier Champion Shields. Waveframe grenade launchers aren't the most efficient method to break a barrier shield, but at least will have increased damage. And if you're not utilizing an auto-reloading third column perk, Deconstruct will be able to fill in that gap. We also have bait and switch in the fourth column. And before you get too excited about the prospect of this becoming a DPS weapon, it's just not really worth it. Waveframes do deal extra damage now, but there's far better DPS options out there. Still yet, Bait and Switch can be pretty beneficial as it provides a 30% bonus in damage when rotating through all of your weapons. I just find it less of a benefit on this particular grenade launcher. The perk that I do find to be the most cohesive with the Tusk of the Boar is Chain Reaction. This is so good when clearing out big groups of enemies. This causes targets to explode on funnel blows triggering a chain reaction that's going to damage surrounding enemies. Chain reaction pairs up really well with any of the auto reloading perks, and it even pairs up really well with Slice, since you'll be able to apply that debuff to a larger group of enemies. Chain reaction is definitely the best suited PvE perk in the fourth column, but we do have one more perk to talk about. The last perk that I want to mention is more suited for PvP. Swashbuckler. It provides a stacking bonus in damage after defeating an enemy with a melee or with this weapon. This starts as a 6% bonus and maxes out at 33%. While this could certainly be of a benefit in the Crucible, I do feel that Deconstruct would be a more sensible option since you'd be primarily focusing around the use of your primary weapon. And with that, we've covered all the perk variations and the best combinations that you'll want to keep an eye out for when farming for the Tusk of the Boar. This grenade launcher is available all week, but if you miss out on it, don't worry. Iron Banner should make one more appearance before the season ends. For now though, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the Tusk of the Boar, so be sure to let us know down in the comments below. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed, and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.